Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods and Vlogmas day 13. Today is an exciting one. Uh, I already had this video in the making or planned to be made, but it's actually one of the first videos that we're making here for Vlogmas that is brought to you by one of the subscribers, somebody that had a video suggestion. So we're kind of going to combine those two together. So let's uh, go over what we're going to do and talk about and I'll show you what's going on. All right, so this video is gonna be about our HVAC. Uh, and that was brought up to, again, by one of you guys wanting to hear everything that we're doing and kind of a basic uh, plan and rundown of how everything's gonna lay out in the house. But first, what I wanna talk about is our fan installation. So far, the fan installation has not been working. Now, granted, the thermostat is over there in the laundry room. So if the air is blowing down in here, getting all the way over in there to almost, you know, basically a closed off laundry room hasn't been working too well. So I guess a better test would be is if I move the thermostat out here and like put it on the mantle, wait it a day, and if it's still reading like 61, then turn the fan on. And if the thermostat bumps up to like 62, 63, then it definitely is working but it's only gonna work probably in this main living area with the vaulted ceilings. It's probably not getting over there too much. The other thing is Aaron still has to figure out uh, or the company get back to Aaron and say if we can get the larger fan blades, which most of you guys were in agreement that uh, it has to go bigger. So we're gonna get rid of the 72s and if we can't get the or 74s, whatever they are, and if we can't get the 80 somethings, I told Aaron, let's just purchase a whole new fan in the bigger size, then we'll return the motor and those fan blades with the smaller package because I can almost guarantee the motor is 100% identical because a few more inches in blade size, I don't think needs to step up to a bigger one. But I guess only time will tell, but we'll see. But uh, that is the game plan. We are gonna go bigger, but I don't think it's gonna have as drastic as an effect as I thought it was going to. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because again, on Vlogmas day number three, where I was talking about possibly needing a fan and the difference in temperatures and everything, I had a thought. And that was, or and I even had a question for you guys. The basement is so hot at only 65 degrees. I was like, this can't be comfortable from here on out. So what happens when we install our HRV and we're bringing in cold air from right now, it's like 35 degrees outside. If we're bringing in 35 degree air, it goes through the HRV and then blows out through registers down in the basement. Won't that have somewhat of a cooling effect? And apparently that is what's going to happen. Uh, I called up a place that sells HRVs and they said most of the HRVs have a recovery of about 80 something percent. And in terms of what that means, I'm not 100% sure. For example, if it's 35 outside and it's 68 in here one day, as those temperatures bypass each other, does that mean you're only getting like 80% of the 68 degrees, because then that means the registers are actually gonna be blowing pretty cold. While that will help out the basement feel cooler than it actually is, that seems pretty darn cold. So I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work, but after I made that video, I had to call up people and I had to get some questions answered. And uh, at first I had looked on supplyhouse.com. They didn't really have anything in stock. So the make and model that I looked at popped up on hvacquick.com. They had it in stock. I called them up. The lady was very knowledgeable. We answered a whole bunch of questions. And why don't you know it, after about 20 minutes of talking or so, I was like, you know what, let's just do it. I gotta do it. The house is gonna get stuffy. It's all closed up. So why don't we go ahead and just purchase the uh, HRV, try to get it installed here shortly, and then all these questions will be answered. So we're gonna be bringing in tons of fresh air, kicking out all of the old, 
and uh, I can't wait to unwrap this thing and actually get it installed. But first, before we do that, to help answer some of the questions on the viewer requests, to go over real quick on the entire HVAC system of our house. You guys obviously know at this point that our heating is being provided by the radiant floor down in the basement. We have a Renai 200,000 BTU tankless hot water tank that is providing the heat and the hot water that goes throughout everything. Uh, it is propane and we have a six zone setup for the house. We do have another pump going out to the garage which has three zones, but this is where our heat is coming from. Now, as you can see, we're set to 140 degrees. And the reason why we're set so hot is because our cold water returns are only coming back at about 70, just over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the reason why that's uh, doing that, I believe is I made a mistake on the radiant floor tube install. My tubes seem to be have been installed about every foot or so on center and with half inch pecs, Online, it looks like they should have been installed more at about eight inches on center. So when we use our thermal down here in the concrete, you can definitely see the hot pipes, but then you definitely start to see cold spots. So I think the concrete in between two pipes uh, gets too cold or doesn't get that warm. Even though we have two inches of foam under the concrete, I think it just cools off too much and it's not radiating over enough to the next stop uh, where the pipe run is. So that's probably again online why we should have done the eight inches on center instead of the one foot. So I've got the water going out hotter so it comes back hotter. So that was a mistake on my part for install, but at least down here in the basement, it definitely is comfortable, sometimes too comfortable. But if you guys are doing a radiant floor for your own house, go eight inches on center and I probably would have ended up with an extra zone or two to just provide that extra heat and it probably would have kicked the boiler off sooner so it doesn't kick on as much as it does or however often it does because it would get warmer up in here faster. Now one day we're going to have additional heating and that is going to be from a gas fireplace that we're going to install in there. Obviously, we have not cut the hole out yet because we don't know what size, make, and model we're going to go with, but there will be a gas only, and it's going to be a ventless. There is no chimney going up in there, and the reason why I did that is because I didn't want any roof penetrations. I didn't want any fire hazards up in there. I didn't want to have to deal with the whole boxing out of a chimney and all that stuff, so ventless is just better for us. The only downside to ventless, it does produce more condensation from the burning of the propane inside of the house. So we do have to take care of possible wintertime humidity control that we'll deal with at a later time with some of the other units that we're gonna be installing. And furthermore, to get on to more HVAC and heating, we are gonna go with mini split installs. Now, the one problem that we did with the house is we did not spend the money on what's called a manual J report. And that is having somebody look at the entire house, uh, the volume, the size and everything, and figuring out what units we need, where they need to be installed, where the registers are gonna go, you know, the fresh air and the returns, et cetera, et cetera. We did not pay for all that. A manual J report, at least from one company that I looked at, was gonna be like almost $2,000. That was not in our budget to plan or to pay, so we pretty much are just doing it, this all by ourselves. Obviously, the heat in the basement is working. Uh, it's not working up here too great because again, all of the heat has to come up through just that hole right there since we have insulation underneath of the subfloor here. So it kind of gets trapped in the basement. And But we did that insulation for soundproofing so it doesn't transfer down into the basement that easily. But we are going to need some help up here on the first floor with heating. Again, with either fireplace or the mini splits that we're gonna install. Now the mini split sizes came from us talking to again, uh, HVACquick.com or Supply House or just going online and doing the calculations. But we came back with what we're gonna be using is on the first floor here, this mini split up here for this volume in here is gonna be an 18,000 unit connected to a 36,000 condenser that sits outside. 
And the reason why those numbers are different is because in the master bedroom, we're also going to have a head unit up there, which is going to be a 12,000 unit. So 18K can go ahead and basically give additional heating for the first floor, also going to be our air conditioning. And then because these doorways are tall and large, if we leave them open with that mini split above the uh, back windows here, it can blow in through the bedroom, through the bathroom and into the closet, again, providing additional heat and the air conditioning. So it'll be an 18 plus a 12 head unit down to a 36K condenser that sits outside. Not that this has to do with the house or anything, but the mini split out here has been calculated that up there on the wall somewhere, we're gonna have a 24K unit, and that is also gonna be attached to a 36K condenser. I don't think they make a 24K condenser that sits outside, so that'll just be a 36 out there with a 24 head unit. And again, that can provide additional heating if need be. So the radiant maybe doesn't run as much, but the radiant out here in the garage seems to be working pretty good because we only have it set to 55 degrees and it barely ever kicks on unless you open up a door for too long and the cold air basically just hits that thermostat. And it's not that it needs to kick on, it just thinks it needs to kick on. So once the door shuts and the cold air stops blowing in, uh, again, that guy pretty much turns off, but we'll have additional heating out here if need be, so we don't use as much propane. And that mini split can kick on when those doors uh, kick open. And again, it can get that thermostat to shut off sooner because that hot air will basically be blowing right over top of that thermostat. But again, also it will be nice out here that we also will have air conditioning in the summertime. And then back down here in the basement, we'll have one more head unit. So this is gonna be four head units with three condensers that sit outside. Obviously the living room upstairs and the master bedroom, again, that's two head units on one condenser. But right up here somewhere, we're gonna have one more head unit and that's gonna be a 36K head unit to a 36K condenser. That guy up there is gonna provide additional heat but also all of the air conditioning for the entire basement. And I know that sounds crazy because we've obviously got a completely walled off gym with a closed door. The utility room is going to have a closed door and these bedrooms and bathroom are also going to have a cold uh, closed door. But it's so cool down here in the summertime that even though those walls are closed because we're below grade, it's really not that big of a deal that we need crazy air conditioning down here. But that largest head unit and largest condenser that they make is going to go up there and will provide air conditioning hopefully for the entire bedroom and that's going to be plumbed in because here in the vault we have pvc pipe already ready to go through the icf blocks that i just have to extend that pipe from there over to here cut through this wall and then yeah it sucks to have that pipe going through the middle of my vault but that is where the drainage and the uh, Freon lines and everything are gonna go through. So that way we can get over to this side of the vault wall where the unit is actually going to be installed. So as for our HVAC, that pretty much is all of the heat. That's three heat sources again. That's the floor, that's the fireplace, and here in the house, that is three head units. So we have three different options for heating in this house. And air conditioning, obviously, is all being provided by the mini splits that obviously are attached to all of the walls. All right, now on to the big one. We've got one more HVAC to talk about, and that is obviously the HRV, which was confirmed that being in Ohio, in a colder state, we do need an HRV instead of an ERV. The difference basically being the HRV again will help heat the air up. So if we're bringing in cold winter air, it's going to mix with the house air that is leaving the house, the stagnant air that's being pushed back out. It's going to kind of preheat it and that is gonna, so that we don't have registers bringing in like 30 degree cold air, making the house really cold. So HRV definitely needed in Ohio. We've already answered the fact that the registers will be blowing cooler air because it doesn't mix 100% to heat the air up to full actual temperature in here. So that is one issue again that we'll have to see how that works uh, come when we actually get it installed. 
And real quick in the manual, it did say that come winter time, you do have to adjust the settings. Obviously this thing can't run continuously 24 seven or else it's gonna freeze up and you're just gonna be blowing in absolutely freezing cold winter air and your house is gonna be miserable. So how that thing runs has multiple settings. Uh, summer, winter, fall, I think you have to do a different setting almost every time. But again, only time will tell what we actually have. All right, so without further ado, I ended up going with a unit by a manufacturer called Life Breath. The reason why I went with them is how to figure out what size we needed. It's simple calculation, and I mentioned this in video number three. It's simply length of your house times width of your house times the height of your house, and you have to do that for every floor. So you take that total in the basement, you take that total up in here, you divide it by 60 for some reason, and then you multiply it by the average or the norm is about 0.35. And again, I believe that 0.35 is how many air exchanges you want per hour, which means if that thing is running continuously in the summertime, within just under three hours, we will completely have removed all of the air in this house and replaced it with fresh outside air. And that's if the unit was running maybe at max speed. Uh, I don't know what max speed actually will be, but again, we did the calculation based on 0.35 air exchanges an hour, which had us come up with this unit. And this unit is oversized. Our calculation actually came at about 238 CFM, but Life Breath and another company that we were looking at who, who I bought this from, both said they were both top of the line. You can't go wrong with either. Uh, their next unit sizes down were only like around 200 and I didn't want to undersize. So the fact that we needed 238, the next sizes up from both companies was in the 260s. So this guy from Life Breath is the largest residential unit that they make and it is called the 267 Max. And the reason, the biggest reason why I went with Life Breath is because the other company's 265 came with eight inch ducts. And I do not feel like drilling eight inch holes through all of my floor joists and two holes through my ICF wall. The Life Breath only has six inch duct work. So drilling those holes through the concrete is gonna be easier with a six inch and a six inch through my floor joist so we have no bulkheads down in the basement. Six inch is just gonna be a hell of a lot easier to route that piping and install it. Hence again, why we went with the Life Breath and it seems to be a very popular, it's a very expensive. Uh, the total shipping on everything in this guy was around $2,200 and that was for the unit that was for the wired controller that we have to install somewhere up in here. I think we're gonna do it over on that wall by the fireplace and the switches. And then I bought additional filters. So it was more expensive than the other company, but with the six inch duct work and 267 CFM, we're good that we can take care of our 238 in here and we'll get plenty of air exchanges if we need to ramp this thing up to full power. But let's open this guy up and see how she looks. Let's see what we got. All right, so first thing I notice, it's a little odd. We do have six inch ducts, but they are oval. Not exactly sure why they do that. But uh, I was assured by, again, HVACquick.com, who I bought this from. She assured me over the phone, you just use your standard kind of flexible six inch duct work and you just kind of bend it around here and then lock it down. And then af obviously after like a foot or so, it maintains its normal circle shape. So it's probably just for fitment issues to get this thing to be smaller and more compact to do that. But uh, that's what they have, so that's what we got to use. All right, so opening this thing up, looks like we've got some hardware, some mounting straps, so we can go ahead and hang it from the ceiling. Obviously some instructions. This thing is sealed up with some gaskets. It has layers of insulation on it. These are the filters, these green mesh filters that it comes with that I bought additionally. Uh, I'm not exactly thrilled that it comes with like these mesh type of filters instead of like uh, paper ones. So I do not know what their Merv rating is. 
But uh, maintenance and general uh, replacement or even washing these ones out because they are uh, not made of paper, that's just gonna be depend on how dirty the air is coming in and how dirty the air is going out. So we'll just have to play that by ear how often they need taken care of but that's obviously not gonna happen until we get it installed and getting up and running. Now, the only thing I'm not in love with is it does have a power cord, a traditional, we'll hook it up to a 20 amp outlet. So we will have to run an additional dedicated outlet down in the basement, but this thing's only three foot long. So not exactly giving you a lot of room, but if we're custom doing an outlet, going over from the panel down in the utility room somewhere, obviously this thing's gonna hang from the ceiling. Uh, we can go ahead and put the outlet anywhere, but you only get a three, three foot power cord, which is a little awkward, but install and hanging this thing up actually shouldn't be that much of a, of a big deal. Now we'll have to do a full install video of this thing. Uh, again, I don't know when it'll actually be. We still have to get a core driller and drill some pretty big holes through the ICF. We're probably going to encounter rebar. So that'll have to be a time where I can dedicate almost a full day and renting a, uh, a core drill uh, bit and the actual drill from one of the local supply houses. So we'll do that at a later time and get this thing hung up and running. Obviously we have to go over all the instructions, see how the settings are working, but that is what we're going to use. And again, at least my questions were answered. We know that we're gonna be bringing in some cooler air into the house now. We're gonna be bringing in fresh air and with that guy being the size that it is, the largest one that they make for residential, I think that we should have no problem ramping that thing up or ramping it down. That if we've got stinky, snag, stagnant air from cooking or something else that may be going on, we can totally exchange all of the air inside of this house and bringing in some fresh quality clean air on demand when we actually need it. And now the last part of this video is, where are we going to put the registers for this thing? Well, the lady at HVACquick.com, her general recommendation is you wanna put the suction, the bringing out the stale air in the house, you wanna put them in rooms that basically you never go into. So for example, up here on the first floor, the laundry room or utility rooms would be a good idea. Closets would be a good idea. And any rooms that basically don't get used a lot. So the utility room would be one, the vault may be another. And she also recommended possible bathrooms. So we got the bathroom downstairs and we got the master bath over here. So that's a possibility of that's where all of the uh, suctioning, sucking out the air in the house where those registers will go. And then obviously the fresh airs will go in places that you're constantly in. So that would be like the kitchen, that would be the living room, the master bedroom, uh, maybe the gym, maybe right in the center of the basement, and then maybe the be uh, bedrooms down here. The biggest dilemma that we have a problem with is again, Aaron and I do not want any bulkheads down in the basement. And because we don't want any bulkheads down in the basement, we cannot drill through the main LVL beam running down through the center of the house, which means no ductwork or registers can go towards the front of the house, which means all of them have to be on this side of the LVL, which is on this side where the utility room is. So someone was asking me where all the registers are gonna go. Well, I can tell you what right now, no registers, can go over there in the laundry room. So that's a stagnant, stale area basically that won't ever get a register. The master closet over there on that side, that's another place we can't put a register because I can't get over there. So the best that we're gonna be able to do uh, for, let's start with the fresh air. The best that we're gonna be able to do is probably again in the kitchen for the fresh air. And that will simply just have to come out of the utility room and probably pop up right here on the left side of this main beam, trek all the way down there next to the main beam, and then pop up and go into the living room. And then again, trek all the way down and put a fresh air in the master bedroom, which will be all the way over there in that back corner. And then the same thing can go for the basement. We can turn down and put a fresh air into the gym, turn down and put one into the living 
And then we can also maybe just put one in that bathroom or one just in that bedroom or don't worry about that side altogether. I don't know. I'm not an HVAC expert to know how much we need or where they need to go. But if we put all of the vents and registers in the middle of the house, whether that be down here in the basement or up in the first floor, then just as much air is going to blow towards the back wall as it is going to blow towards the front wall. So centrally placing them is about as best as we going to do. And again, that's just because of the design of the house. It has to do with this main beam and the fact that we can't go through it. And Aaron and I absolutely do not want any bulkheads down here. So I guess it's just, it is what it is. There's nothing that we can really change about it. So we just have to basically live with it and see how it works unless someone else has a suggestion. And then of course, as for the returns, obviously we would put one down in here for this bathroom, we could put one in the utility room, and I don't know if we could put another uh, return in here anywhere. Maybe we could put another one in the gym or vice versa, depending if the gym needs fresh air or no fresh air, we just use it as a return. But that's something that you guys could maybe help answer and decide where those could go. As for the first floor, we would obviously have a return Again, possibly somewhere up in here also, away from the fresh air. So let's say if we ended up putting the return by the fireplace and only one fresh air up here that would go somewhere in the kitchen, that would probably be okay. And then again, we'd have a fresh air in the master bedroom and we could have a return over in the bathroom. But unfortunately, there's no other returns that can go anywhere because we can't get ductwork over into the laundry room and we can't get ductwork over into the closet. And that's about all I have for you guys. If you guys got any suggestions now that you've kind of heard where our full HVAC system is going to be here in the house for all of the heating, all of the air conditioning, and all of the fresh air, I would love to hear your guys' suggestions and if you guys got any advice on anything. Again, this crack right here is the center beam going all the way down the house. So all of the registers basically have to sit right here. And it's not really, again, the end of the world. If you've got a fresh air right here in the center of the house, you're just as equal away from the back wall as you are over there on the front wall. So it's not like this area is not going to get fresh air. But uh, again, drop your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys got any suggestions, if there's any HVAC experts out there, if there's anyone who's ever looked at or done a manual J report, you tell me what you think. I'm only going off of what the lady who sold me this unit told me, where they should go and roughly how many there should be. And then again, the calculations for the mini slits, they were all based on the volume of the sizes and that's what uh, Mr. Cool actually recommended that I needed for the sizes that uh, they quoted me. So again, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna wrap up Vlogmas day number 13 here. We'll have some more uh, viewer suggested videos coming out for you guys. And uh, let me know what you guys think of our new unit. I can't wait to get this thing installed and actually see what it will do to the house's smell, the house's fresh air, and uh, maybe some cooling. And also we could turn the heat up a little bit to see what this house is actually going to be running uh, for the rest of its life, at least in the winter time. So again, comment down below. Like if you guys think I'm on a good path here. And uh, we'll be back for Vlogmas Day number 14. Till then, I hope you all take care.